Okay, so I've opened up Cinema 4D. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of type uh, and then export that out for uh, Adobe Arrow. So I want to go through that process. Um, I'm going to use uh, MoGraph, and if you have uh, an educational version, you should be able to access this. I'm going to use something called MoText, and this lets me basically make 3D type. So here's, uh, you can see it came in on the side. Um, uh, I'm going to select it to make sure uh, I have the options here, and you can see all the options will be down here, the attributes. And I'm just going <clears> to <throat> make a little title for this workshop. It's uh, DES uh, 408 is the, co the course I'm making this for. Um, I guess it's it's AR in 3D, so I'll just I'll just write 3D. Uh, there we go. Um, okay, a few things to get around in this program. Um, you know, you want to be careful where you're selecting. I want to make sure I'm not still in this box. But if I'm selected off of this uh, to move around in here, I can hold down one and click and move. Um, two is going to let me zoom in and out. I'm clicking and dragging. And three is going to let me rotate around here. And I you know, can also use the scroll wheel to kind of zoom in and out. But this is going to really help me understand what I'm seeing. I also can look at multiple views by hitting this button in the cor top corner. And you'll see I have top, front, right. And so this will just give me a better idea of what I'm looking at here. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm in here. Uh, we can select a different typeface if we want to. It's a little bit slow, but it should pull up soon. You can also see there's a depth um, option, so you can make this um, be really deep. <clears throat> uh, you can play with the height. Uh, the leading and the tracking also are things that you can play with. Uh, just took a while to load those up. So let me pick some sort of... Eh, that's not great. Uh, some of these, I think, are just some pretty weird fonts. Um, uh, I like Din. Din's fun. Again, I can track it in, maybe. Uh, do I want to bring it up tight? Like this. Um, or, hmm, now I'm thinking maybe I want one to be smaller than the other. Maybe, uh, I just made a copy of this by holding control and clicking and dragging. Maybe I actually just want one of these to be smaller. So this is, and you can write a label in here, DES408, so you know what you're doing. AR3D. Uh, I want to make it so that these are separate. Uh, so I can just scale them separately. And then the other thing you need to know is when you want to move things around, um, you can see these axes here. You can switch between E is going to let you move the position. Hold on R. It's going to let you rotate around. I'll undo that. And T is going to let you scale around. So those are some quick shortcuts. Remember, one, two, three, E, R, T super important okay so i'm just going to uh yeah maybe i'll just i wanted to maybe make a little like hierarchy here um okay that looks okay i it feels like a little bit uh, tight oh, i can change the weight here maybe okay so i've got this set up i also want to show one other thing right now you can see that the type is uh it's a really hard edge, but what we can do is soften it by adding a fillet cap. Uh, you can see what happened right there. Um, because it's a, that value is a little bit too high, you can see it actually expands beyond and kind of creates weird geometry. So we can change the radius. You probably only need a small radius here, but to me that adds a little bit of uh, uh, subtlety. Right now you can also change the number of intermediate steps. So you can smooth it off a little bit. So three and one is okay for that, it looks like. Um, it's a little tight, but I'm gonna go into here and add this. Uh, so you can see what that looks like. Maybe that, because this is a little bit bigger, you could probably get it with a, a, a bigger value. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> and we're in 3D space, so maybe you want to, maybe this type should be like a little bit, should be on different planes maybe. Uh, okay, so I've got this set up. Um, this is great because it's editable, but uh, so we could bring this into Adobe Arrow, but one thing that you might run into is uh, some issues in exporting. So this is just a quick overview of how to uh, further reduce the geometry or the forms if you run into issues. Then I want to convert these into straight up geometry. So the way to do that is by pressing C, the button C, and that will, you can see, break it down into these individual parts. Um, I still, uh, I, think th I think this should be sufficient for me to bring it in. So let me just hit C there, export this for Adobe Arrow. So I'm going to uh, go to export and uh, two file types that uh, Adobe Arrow will work with are FBX and GLTF. Um, oh, actually, I should say before I even do this, I have not put any materials on here. So I want to maybe put a color on here. I'll do something simple. Let's add a new material. Let's, we can put this on top. Uh, well, I guess we can use the same material, or maybe we'll switch it. Uh, I'm going to keep it really simple. I just want it to be colored in. So pick my color this way, maybe something bright. Uh, okay, that's, that's fine for me. So we put a material on here. We just did that by making a material, clicking and dragging it onto this, uh, this object. Okay, so this is actually the 3D type I made with the MoGraph uh, MoText tool. Uh, you can see this is set up like this. And uh, one thing I realize is that I actually don't need to um, <clears throat> convert this into polygons or, or uh, you know, do some reductions to it. Um, sometimes there might be errors and, and that to me is a technique to kind of clean things up. I can actually just take this and then save this or export this as uh, maybe we'll we'll do an FBX and I'll maybe I'll just say yeah uh, this is the editable editable version so I kept it in Motex and that's nice because I could always like change things if I needed to um, okay so I've exported that and now I'm going to go into Adobe Arrow I have this uh, file that I've created and I should be able to import that element this FBX file that I just created uh, and it should come in like this now let's just take a look and make sure yeah it came in with the same amount of distance in between it it's got a that material on it um, yeah so this this is a quick and easy way to maybe bring some 3d type in and uh, the same process uh, can be repeated for other geometry other 3d forms that you make in cinema 4d just export it as uh, an fbx or a gltf um, and we'll look at some different techniques to do that so I'm going to open up that file that I made in Adobe Arrow uh, on my mobile device. Here I am uh, placing that into 3D space. Now, I, uh, this seems a little bit small, so I'm going to go and select it and scale it up. Uh, so you can edit, again, edit these files once you're out in the real world uh, to kind of get the experience and the, the scale or you know interactions that you want. And yeah, now it's... Um, I'm just previewing this, I'm in the space, and as I walk around, everything is being tracked onto, uh, onto the footage. So uh, again, this is the end result. We're working in 3D, uh, Cinema 4D, getting some text out there, and then going out into the real world.